I'm proud to report to you under President Donald Trump, we've rebuilt our military. We restored the arsenal of democracy. And this president signed the largest investment in our national defense since the days of Ronald Reagan, including the largest pay raise for our military forces in more than 10 years. And close to home, Hampton Roads, under this president, saw three additional Navy ships stationed here, adding 25,000 military personnel, contractors, and their families to this community, bringing the economic impact of the Navy to more than $16 billion. But beyond the investment, I have to tell you, as the proud father of a United States Marine, and the father-in-law of a pilot in the United States Navy, I couldn't be more proud to serve as vice president to a president who cares so deeply about the men and women of our armed forces. Under President Donald Trump, we are finally giving our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guard the resources and the support they deserve to accomplish their mission and defend this nation. We're doing it. And with that renewed American strength, we've taken the fight to radical Islamic terrorists on our terms on their soil. Where Joe Biden and the last administration oversaw the reckless withdrawal of troops from Iraq with ISIS capturing an area the size of Pennsylvania. Under our commander in chief, the armed forces of the United States captured the last inch of ISIS territory, crushed their caliphate, and took down their leader without one American casualty. where Joe Biden sent pallets of cash to the mullahs in Iran. President Trump got us out of the Iran nuclear deal, gave the order to take down the world's most dangerous terrorist, and Qasem Soleimani is gone. So we've stood with those who serve, and we've stood with all of you who wore the uniform of the United States. When Joe Biden was vice president, America saw years of scandal at the VA that literally shocked the conscience of the nation. But under President Donald Trump, we signed the most sweeping reforms of the VA in 50 years. The VA now has a 90% approval rating, and Veterans Choice is now available to every veteran in America. And under this president, in our first three years, there's three more ways you can describe it. It was jobs, jobs, jobs. Where Joe Biden wants to raise taxes, our president cut taxes across the board. We, we rolled back federal red tape at a historic level, unleashed American energy, fought for free and fair trade, and in our first three years, businesses large and small created more than 7 million good-paying jobs, including 164,000 jobs right here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And you know, none of that would have been possible without the strong support of Republicans in Congress, like Congressman Rob Whitman and North Carolina's Congressman Greg Murphy.
Thank you, man. But that's also, Rob will tell you, that's also why we need to send these congressmen back, and we need to send Scott Taylor and Nick Friatas to a new Republican majority on Capitol Hill. We need to retire Speaker Nancy Pelosi once and for all. The road to a Republican majority runs right through Virginia. It's true. So we've stood for our national defense. We've stood with our veterans and for jobs and opportunities. And President Donald Trump, every day of this administration, has stood for the rule of law. This president has appointed more than 200 conservative judges to our federal courts at every level, including Justice Neil Gorsuch and Justice Brett Kavanaugh. And I can tell you, I can tell you, those more than 200 federal judges are all men and women of integrity who will uphold all the God-given liberties enshrined in our Constitution, like the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion, and the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. Now this week, we mourn as a nation and honor the life of service of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The Constitution of the United States provides that the President shall appoint judges to the Supreme Court. And I promise you, come this time tomorrow, President Donald Trump will do his duty and we will nominate a principled conservative woman to the Supreme Court of the United States. And after the Senate fulfills their duty to advise and consent, we're going to fill that seat. So we've stood for the rule of law every day. And President Donald Trump has stood with the men and women who serve on the thin blue line of law enforcement, and we always will. The President and I know what all of you know. Men and women who serve in law enforcement are some of the best people in this country. And they deserve the respect of every American every day. Now, the President and I will always support the right of Americans to peaceful protest enshrined in the Constitution. But rioting and looting is not peaceful protest. <laughs> Burning businesses is not free speech. Violence against law enforcement like you saw in Virginia Beach this summer will not be tolerated, and those who do these things will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Now, for months, all Joe Biden ever talked about was peaceful protesters, as the American people watch businesses in our communities literally burn. The truth is, Joe Biden would double down on the policies that have led to violence in America's cities. Now, Joe Biden says that America is systemically racist. And that law enforcement is, in his words, and I quote, has an implicit bias against minorities. When Joe Biden was asked whether he'd support cutting funding to law enforcement, he replied, yes, absolutely. But I'll make you a promise. Under President Donald Trump, 
We're going to back the blue. We're not going to defund the police. Not now, not ever. We're going to have law and order in every city, in every state, in this nation, for every American of every race and creed and color. So help us God. So we rebuilt our military. We revived our economy. We stood for our liberties in law and order. And in three, three short years, we made America great again. And then the coronavirus struck from China. But I'm proud to report to you before the first documented case of community transmission within the United States even happened. President Donald Trump did what no American president had ever done. He suspended all travel from China, the second largest economy in the world, and saved American lives. Now, Joe Biden said that the president's action was, quote, hysterical and xenophobic. But as the leader of the White House Coronavirus Task Force, I can tell you firsthand, President Donald Trump's actions saved untold American lives, and it bought us invaluable time to stand up the largest national mobilization since World War II. We reinvented testing. We saw to the manufacture and delivery of hundreds of millions of medical supplies to doctors and nurses across the country. We've been developing medicines from the outset of this pandemic that are saving lives today. And we are on track as I stand here today to have the first safe and effective vaccine for coronavirus before the end of this year. That's what leadership looks like. So thanks to the cooperation of the American people, the extraordinary work of healthcare workers at every level. We're slowing the spread. We're protecting the vulnerable. We're saving lives. And we're opening up America again. In fact, because of the strong foundation that this president poured, because of the unprecedented support that he secured from the Congress, after losing 22 million jobs at the height of this pandemic, We've already seen 10.6 million Americans go back to work, including 188,000 people right here in Virginia. So we've gone through a time of testing. But in 39 days, we're coming to a time for choosing. And the choice in this election has never been clear. And I think you all know the stakes have never been higher. I mean, think of this contrast. In the middle of a global pandemic, Joe Biden wants to raise taxes by $4 trillion. <laughs> President Trump, he cut taxes across the board for working families and businesses, and we're going to keep cutting taxes for four more years. <laughs> Joe Biden wants to bury our economy under an avalanche of red tape. He even got his own version of the Green New Deal. <laughs> president Trump, he actually signed more laws cutting federal red tape than any president in American history, and we're going to keep on chopping for four more years. <laughs> Joe Biden is for open borders, sanctuary cities, free lawyers and free health care for illegal immigrants. President Donald Trump has made record investments in border security, supported our Customs and Border Patrol and ICE, and we've already built more than 300 miles of a border wall on the southern border of the United States, and with four more years, we're going to build it all. Oh, we're building it. And 
when it comes to international trade, Joe Biden has been a cheerleader for communist China for decades. I mean, half of our international trade deficit when we took office was with China. We were losing $500 billion a year. And Joe Biden said that China wasn't even much competition for America. President Trump, he put China on notice on day one and said the era of economic surrender is over. We impose tariffs and we will stand strong until China opens their markets and respects American private property and American workers. And when it comes to values, Joe Biden and the Democratic Party support late-term abortion. And Joe Biden supports using taxpayer dollars to pay for abortion all the way up to the moment of birth. And I can tell you from my heart, I couldn't be more proud to serve as vice president to a president who stands without apology for the sanctity of human life. President Donald Trump is the most pro-life president in American history. I mean, when you look at their agenda, it's clear. Joe Biden would be nothing more than a Trojan horse for the radical left. Now, Joe Biden said at their convention that democracy is on the ballot. Well, I believe that our economic recovery is on the ballot. I believe that law and order are on the ballot. But I also believe there are things much more foundational to this country that are on the ballot as well. I mean, I can honestly tell you, I think in this election, it's, it's not going to be whether America ends up more conservative or more liberal, more Republican or more Democrat. I think the choice in this election is whether America remains America. Whether we're going to chart a course based on our highest ideals of freedom, free markets, personal responsibility, and our most cherished values, or whether we're going to take a turn, turn to the radical left, and transform America into something altogether different. So I want to say to all of you, for our freedom and all the ideals that have always made America great, we need to decide right here and right now that Joe Biden will never be President of the United States. We're going to re-elect President Donald Trump for four more years. I mean, think about it. Four more years means more jobs. Four more years means more judges. Four more years means more support for our troops. And it's going to take at least four more years to drain that swamp. Oh, we're draining it. So my fellow Americans, get ready. Buckle up. It's on. We got a little more than 40 days to win four more years for President Donald Trump in the White House, so we need you to bring it. We need you to reach out to your neighbors and friends all across this commonwealth and all the friends that you have all across this country. Bring this same enthusiasm. Keep voicing your support. Tell your neighbors and friends all that we've accomplished and what we can do with four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House. You made the difference in 2016, and the American people will make the difference again in 2020. You know, in all my travels across this country, from big cities to small towns, over the last four, four years, I can tell you firsthand, America is a freedom-loving nation. 
and America is a nation of faith. So as you go forth from here, and as you listen to my friend tonight, I want you to have faith. Have faith that the best days for America are ahead. Have faith and confidence that the American people, every time they've been presented a choice between a future of more freedom and less freedom, the American people choose freedom every single time. And lastly, if you're of a mind to bow the head or bend the knee from time to time in the next 39 days, I encourage you to do that too. In a time where it seems like there's more division in this country than any time in my lifetime, I'm absolutely convinced that if his people, who are called by his name, will humble themselves and pray, he'll do like he's always done in the long and storied history of this country. He'll hear from heaven, and he'll heal this land, this one nation under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So pray for America. It'll make a difference. Ladies and gentlemen, I got the feeling somebody just arrived. So I'm going to get out of the way, but I got to tell you, I've served alongside our president shoulder to shoulder for the last four years. And I can tell you, I can tell you, President Donald Trump is the real deal. He's a man who says what he means, means what he says. He never quits. He never backs down. And he has never stopped fighting to keep the promises that he made to the American people. Now it's our turn to fight for him. And I'm just absolutely convinced if all of us do all that we need to do between now and November 3rd, that with your continued support, with you giving voice to all that we've done and all that we have yet to do under this president's leadership, we're going to have a great American comeback. We're going to have a great American victory. We're going to make Virginia and America stronger and more prosperous than ever before. And with President Donald Trump in the White House for four more years, and with God's help, we're going to make America great again. Again. Thank you all very much. God bless Virginia, and God bless the United States of America.